it always pays to read the fine print, especially when it comes to Salesforce contracts. Salesforce is one of the most popular software platforms of all time, with over 150,000 customers worldwide and nearly 20% of the market share for CRM software. But their billing practices and one-sided contracts can make them a very bad fit for small businesses. I recently took a close look at Salesforce's standard user contract and found seven things that could land your small business in hot water. I also spoke to a handful of former Salesforce users who shared real-life horror stories about the financial hardships and frustration they went through and publish my research on the Nutshell blog. Check out the link in the description to read the full article. Here are four things I learned while putting this piece together. First, your Salesforce subscription price can significantly increase on renewal. Section 11.2 of Salesforce's master subscription agreement states that renewal of promotional or one-time price subscriptions will be at Salesforce's applicable list price in effect at the time of the renewal. In other words, whatever price you initially agreed to was only to get you in the door. This is basically the same game that cable companies play, where they lure you in with a promotional price, then jack up the rate after six months or so. And it's not just the amount of your bill that can change. The payment structure can also change on you without warning. One former Salesforce user told me, quote, when my company first signed up with Salesforce, we were on quarterly billing. And then all of a sudden they changed it to annual upfront billing out of nowhere. They didn't even tell me it was happening. I only found out when I got a bill for $20,000. 20 grand is a huge hit if you're not expecting it and it's not really sustainable for smaller businesses. Number two, Salesforce can terminate your contract and delete your data with only a few days notice. Now officially, Salesforce has to give you 30 days notice before terminating your account. Their master subscription agreement states, a party may terminate this agreement for cause upon 30 days written notice to the other party of a material breach if such a breach remains uncured at the expiration of such period. The problem is that Salesforce doesn't always stick to its own rule particularly with customers who raise contract disputes. I found several Better Business Bureau complaints about account terminations that became effective in a matter of days. And that's terrifying considering that your entire customer database and all your communication histories are wrapped up in your CRM. In one example that I included in my article, a Salesforce customer got an email stating that they were responsible for paying an outstanding invoice of $40,000 within just five days. Otherwise their account would be shut down, which would effectively put them out of business. This user had been attempting to communicate with Salesforce's team for five months and was shuffled from one department to the next without any resolution. And now they were being manipulated into paying the full balance in five days or else. So be warned, Salesforce will occasionally bend the rules of their own contracts and they can get away with it because of the power they hold over their users' businesses. Number three, Salesforce won't let you change your seat count during a term. This is such a small line in their contract that it's often overlooked, but it's a total landmine. Section 5.1 of the Salesforce Master Subscription Agreement says, quote, Quantities purchased cannot be decreased during the relevant subscription term. Make no mistake, you can add seats at any time and pay them more money. But their formal position is that you're not allowed to reduce your seats and pay them less money. So basically, if one of your sales reps leaves the company a month after you sign the Salesforce contract, or you have to let some people go because you can no longer afford them, you're still stuck paying for their seats for the entire term. In practice, Salesforce doesn't treat this as an ironclad rule, but more of a point of leverage when dealing with their customers. I spoke to one ex-Salesforce user who told me his company needed to drop seats from their account because their business was seasonal and they didn't need as many sales reps after their busy season. He said, quote, we tried to adjust the contract but they always tried to twist it to their favor. It was always like, okay, you wanna drop two users, we're willing to do that, but we need to sign another two-year agreement for the four users that you're keeping. In other words, Salesforce will sell you a package based on the maximum number of users you might have. And when you find out you don't need as many seats, they'll say, sorry, no can do, unless you extend the length of your contract. Pretty sneaky if you ask me. And number four, if Salesforce sells you the wrong product, you still can't break your contract or get a refund. Salesforce's standard user contract absolves them of all responsibility, even when their sales reps accidentally sell a customer the wrong product. Salesforce has a disclaimer in section 8.3 of their contract to protect the sale, no matter what the sales rep told you. Quote, content and beta services are provided as is and as available exclusive of any warranty whatsoever. Here's something a former Salesforce user said in a complaint with the Better Business Bureau, quote, the Salesforce sales representative reassured me countless times 
that their system would satisfy our needs and that they would be available for any questions to help us get our account set up. Immediately after I agreed to initiate the account, I ran into problems. Finally, I got our sales rep on the phone almost a month after our account started, only to find out that the services that were promised to us were not available. The big takeaway there is that Salesforce does not give refunds of any kind for any reason, even when their team is clearly at fault. One common theme of the conversations I had for the story was how hard it is to find someone at Salesforce to field your questions or concerns. Communicating with Salesforce is nearly impossible, especially if you're trying to get a contract issue resolved. They will ignore you, transfer you repeatedly. It's not in their best interest to help you, and it seems like their goal is to frustrate you into giving up. For more on this topic, please check out the full article linked in the description below. And by the way, if you need a CRM that doesn't lock you into contracts, lets you add or remove users whenever you need to, and won't jack up your price after your first term, visit nutshell.com and learn more about what we do. Thanks for watching. Popular software platforms of all time. Eh. <laughs>